Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. Today's video is going to be centered around the nonverbal communication during Dr. Mike's recent apology for his ill-considered actions earlier this year. But before we dive into that, I want to go ahead and talk about today's sponsor, Exter. Exter is the world's largest smart wallet brand. They design innovative solutions to improve the way that you carry your everyday items. They craft high-end trackable wallets that are designed to keep your valuables safe, slim, and stylish. I have been using Exter wallets for some time now and I support their brand highly. While they use premium materials in all of their products, they were nice enough to send me their new space grade aluminum card holder. Not only is this wallet durable and slim, but it also comes with RFID protection to keep your money and your identity safe. You also have the option of purchasing a GPS tracking card that's charged by solar power that will allow you to be able to track your wallet anywhere, anytime. It can also work as a shutter button for your phone, and it also chimes if you're like me and lose your wallet often. You can also hook it up to Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. However, one of my favorite things about the wallet itself is the quick access card feature. Using this little button here, you are able to quickly access all the cards that you need at the push of a single button. It's a very high quality product that I highly suggest, especially during the upcoming holiday season. They make excellent gifts for not only yourself, but for maybe some loved ones as well. So that's where you and I come in. You can get up to 35% off, off of their different product lines if you use my link below. Like I said, I highly suggest them and thank you again to Exter for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, let's dive into the content itself. Now, Dr. Mike is a popular YouTuber and doctor whose most famous series of videos is arguably the Dr. Reacts series. He has also been a large advocate for proper COVID protocols, and he was seen recently ignoring all of those protocols on a party boat with multiple other people, no one wearing masks, everyone in close proximity, basically breaking every rule that he himself upheld. People found out that he did this and, well, needless to say, the internet was a little bit upset and understandably so, so he decided that he needed to release an apology. However, how he did it was very wrong. He released it on his second channel, which at the time only had 57,000 subscribers, instead of on his main channel, which has over 6 million, and the entire apology itself seemed detached and insincere. Today I'm going to look at his body language and explain to you why that might be and see if there's any other hidden emotions or motives behind the apology itself. That's my backstory. Let's start looking at the video. This pandemic has absolutely taken a toll on all of our physical and mental well-beings. You know, whether you're a nurse, a contractor, a doctor, or regretfully unemployed. Real quick, I'm going to go ahead and pull something out here. This is a scripted apology. Despite his attempts to add in ums and uhs during these times, you could tell that he has rehearsed this at very least if it's not fully scripted. Sincerity is going to be lacking regardless. As soon as an apology is scripted, it comes across as less sincere. However, there's more to it and we'll talk about that. I am not going to be talking about his words so much as his actual body language. If you want more on his words, you can check out plenty of the numerous videos that are on the internet now from various professionals and average viewers about his actions and his words. Today we're looking at his nonverbal communication. It's been a tough year. Uh, we're socially isolated. Um, it's politically charged, divisive time. It's tough, and I think it's okay to say that, that we're all struggling a bit. During all this time, he's using a lot of shrugs partial shrugs and full shrugs, lopsided and full shrugs. This is a sign of insecurity or insincerity. He's also using a lot of open body language with gestures like this. This is all to convey this mindset of I am being open to you, which is actually very suggested maintaining that open body language. That being said, it has still been ringing as insincere for people. And there's a number of reasons for that that we'll get into as we continue watching. I spent this pandemic in New York um, but a few weeks ago, I went down to Miami to my father's apartment. And I want to talk to you about that trip. Okay, so right there when he says, 
I went down to Miami to my father's apartment. He flashes this grimace expression here, and that is likely tied to all of the negative repercussions that he's been feeling from that choice there. Now, if he had just gone down and visited his father in his apartment only, that might be a little bit more permissible. However, we're about to get to the important part of this story, and we can really unpack what his body language says during it. Because I learned a very important lesson that I want to discuss with you. When I went down to Miami, my friend surprised me with a private boat um, as a belated birthday present. And I was very grateful, I was excited. At the same time, I was a little cautious and nervous because we're in the midst of a pandemic. So I went on the CDC website and checked the guidance for wearing masks during water activities. I checked the local boat capacity guidelines, saw we were well below that. And then I started thinking about individual risk. And that's something I talk to you guys quite frequently about. So right off the bat, he's a doctor, right? He's talked about these guidelines and restrictions repeatedly throughout many, many, many videos. He's been educated on it. And a lot of people rely on his word as an influencer, as an educated influencer. They rely on his word for what they should do during a pandemic. And he has said multiple times that you're not supposed to do XYZ. So when he's saying that he went and looked at the website to be able to confirm, chances are he didn't do that. And he also showed a fair bit of no head shaking during the build up to that, which could be either one, him warding off or representing the negative thoughts that are centered around the whole activity itself that he has been receiving. Or it could be that he didn't actually look for the guidelines themselves. Chances are if he's a doctor and he's made so much content on it, I highly doubt he actually checked those guidelines because he probably already knew them. However, for the sake of this video, I'm betting he's just trying to cover his bases. There's more on that in just a sec. I get questions like, is it safe to go on a boat? Is it safe to fly? Is it safe to see my relatives? And there's rarely a one size fits all answer because risk. Most doctors will actually just say, yeah, there is a one size fits all answer. Just don't, don't do it. Even if you're not susceptible to it, you could be exposing others who are susceptible to it. And it's very hard to track the virus itself. So when he's saying that this is a not a one size fits all sort of situation, then he's in essence lying with his words. His body language is so rehearsed that he's not showing any common tells of misalignment or possible deception. And if you see the article that he's referencing here is just from the New York Times. This isn't off of the CDC website or any such thing. It's just off of New York Times, which is still reputable, but also not as reputable as the actual CDC. So when he's saying that this is a spectrum, not really so much. He just shouldn't have done this at all. Is a spectrum. So I looked at my own personal risk level. Um, I'm young. I don't have health problems. I live alone, so I don't put anyone else at risk. I'm gonna be following the proper quarantine and testing protocols, returning back to New York. Um, we're following all the testing, um, boat capacity, and travel guidelines. So I thought for me, this risk level was okay. All right, so you can see during this part, he's using a lot more ums. This indicates that this isn't as scripted. So that means that the earlier part where it sounds so rehearsed, that's it. It's just rehearsed. He probably sat down and recorded this video multiple times to be able to try to get as effective of communication as he could across to his viewers. However, it's not fully scripted. So even in this situation with rehearsed body language, it's still harder to read deception than if it was just an actual raw apology. This is going to be something that you run into the issue with any time you're watching an apology video is that at some level, it's likely rehearsed because nobody wants to tie themselves up in knots in a video and say things that they should never say because it goes really poorly on the internet. So he's rehearsed this a few times. But even considering all that, even considering following the rules as the guidelines that are set forth. So while he's doing this gesture, this is literally showing a physical representation of him putting distance between himself and the thing he's talking about, even considering all of that. All of that, both verbal and nonverbal, he's distancing himself from that. Considering all of the guidelines, distancing himself from that, he's trying to separate himself. And his words are about to say why he's separating himself. However, I also believe that he was just separating himself subconsciously from all of that, be it guidelines and even his own advice of not doing this. 
he knew that this was a bad decision when he went into it, and he's showing that now with his body language. It doesn't matter. I messed up. That is an important phrase verbally. That phrase is what he should have started off with, is just, I, I messed up. I did a dumb decision. It was poorly thought through. I'm an influencer and I'm a doctor who has spoken on this topic so many times and I went against my own word. I messed up. That should be more or less the gist of his apology. Everything else that he has been saying so far has been him trying to excuse himself on some level. Blame it on the friends for coming up with the party. Blame it on the guidelines for being semi-ambiguous. Blame it on his health for being in good health so that he doesn't have to worry as much. So on and so forth. He's been making excuses verbally, spacing himself non-verbally. This is part of the reason why it's ringing so insincere to people. I really did. And I need to do better. So he's doing a lot of shrugging gestures. Once again, this is insecurity. He shakes his head slightly during that part. I'm not dead certain that that's nonverbal misalignment. I think that is just related to the negativity of what he's saying. The no goes with negative. So when he's saying I really did, it's all related to I did a bad thing. The bad thing is causing the no shake. Insecurity. He is insecure about what he did. The reason I'm saying this is because of the impact of my trip. The impact can harm the medical message that I've been delivering from the beginning of this pandemic, that COVID-19 is serious, that masks are a benign yet important measure to reduce the spread of COVID-19, and that I take it very, very seriously. Okay, so he's once again talking about what he did and the effect that it's having on the message that he's been giving to people is that COVID's serious, wear your mask. And then he goes and does this. So he's acknowledging that what he did went against that rule. And he said that he takes it very, very seriously. Now, during that time, he does a pretty solid no shake. I take that very, very seriously. Now that could be true. He could be taking it very, very seriously. And he goes on to give some other examples. However, I think that no shake might be related to the fact that he obviously didn't take it as seriously as he should have. So his subconscious is quite literally leaking out a, I didn't take this as seriously as I should have, but I'm saying that I did. This would be an example of nonverbal misalignment. When I go to work, I wear a mask. When I walk bare, I wear a mask. When I exercise in the gym, I wear a mask because it's truly, truly important. What's killing me most right now is like people leave negative comments and I, I, I deserve that. I'm accepting of that. I messed up here. It's true. But when I see bad actors and just real quick on the verbal note of this, he says all this stuff about how he deserves all this all this negativity that he's getting, which he does. He did a dumb decision. He deserves some backlash for it. Then he caveats it with a but. And as soon as there's a but in something, it kind of discounts what he just said. And now he's trying to make another excuse and put some blame on other people once again. Conspiracy theorists try and use my situation to attack the legitimacy of COVID-19, to downplay its risks, to say masks don't work. That kills me because it feels like I'm being used for nefarious purposes. It's not true. Attack me. Don't attack the science. Don't attack the hardworking women and men of the CDC and the WHO. All during this time, his body language is being sincere. It's all synchronized throughout his words and his nonverbal communication. However, the words that he's saying are too late. He should have thought of that before he did the dumb decision. Let's face it, a lot of people in the world have been very, very, very isolated this entire season. And to see a very popular YouTuber who's well-to-do go and have a boat party with 15 people, nobody wearing masks, everybody in close proximity, it's just asking for problems. And even if nobody in that situation got sick, it's still not an excuse because he left the door open for it to happen. And he did something that was exactly against the message that he had been spreading before. All in all, this is why people are seeing it to be insincere verbally, because he's saying one thing and he did a very, very different thing. Let's keep watching. They're doing research in order to keep you safe at home. So this situation taught me a lot about impact. 
little grimace there when he's thinking about what he's about to say in the situation. He has a lot of negative feelings toward the situation. Now, whether or not that's towards himself or towards the people who are offering backlash is another question. I kind of have the feeling that it's towards the people that are offering backlash. If it wasn't, why isn't this apology video on his main channel instead of his secondary unknown, nobody knows about this channel? He seems to be just saving face during this. What I need to do better, how I under need to understand that my actions carry real consequences. And while I may be following rules and guidelines, it's not enough to just think about that. I have to think about the impact. And the people that I'm saying sorry to right now are very specific people. So while he says that he has been following every rule and guideline, he never looks up at the camera during that point, which for recording purposes is where the eye line is. So when you're trying to be sincere and you look into somebody's eyes to really make that connection, it's the same concept when you look at a camera lens. So when he looks and diverts his gaze about the entire time that he was talking about the guidelines, that's a red flag. I don't think that he checked those guidelines. He knew exactly what he was doing. He had no need to check them. This was a choice that he made and it was a bad one. It's you who have supported me on this channel and been loyal viewers. It's those healthcare providers on the front line who are caring for patients sick with COVID-19. It's those people at home, it's you at home who's done the right thing this entire time and sees me doing this. I'm sorry, I let you down. What I can say is that I'm gonna strive to do better. I'm a human. I messed up here, it's true. A lot of lip compressions during this. Lip compressions is quite literally biting back words or emotions, so this isn't a sign of deceit. This just means that he is biting back some form of negative emotion, be it sadness or anger. Could be a mixture of both, could be guilt. Any negative emotion that is trying to seep out a lip compression will quite literally alert you of that. I really did. This has been a mistake that I'm learning from, I'm working through, I've taken the time for self-reflection, I'm gonna to continue to do so. I can't promise that I won't make- That I'm learning from, I'm doing all this stuff, I promise I'm doing. I don't think it was something that he had to learn from. Like I said, I believe that he knew exactly what he was doing when he got into this mess and did a bad, dumb thing. Let's finish up this video. Make another mistake again. But what I can promise is that I'm gonna to continue to learn from my mistakes I will continue to be transparent and honest so that I can be a better doctor for my patients and to be a better human for my friends, family, and for you. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay happy and healthy. And that's the video. So let's chat about what we saw, what we observed, what we learned, and I'll give you my opinions and then we'll wrap everything up. So to summarize everything that we just saw and took in. A very popular online doctor has said many times to not do XYZ and then he himself went and did XYZ. He claimed that he followed all the guidelines set forth by the CDC, but also realized that it was a mistake, so he posted an apology video to his unknown second channel in hopes that not as many people would see it. That didn't go super well for him, as everybody did actually see the apology video and it is now all over the internet and he is receiving backlash for that, rightfully so. My opinion is he was not as sincere in his apology as he wanted to come across. Not only was this partially due to his rehearsal of the apology, but also because of the various number of nonverbal tells that slipped out that showed his insincerity. What I think should happen with Dr. Mike is we should probably give him a pass. It's not fair what he did. It's not right what he did. It was a bad decision all the way around. But he is, after all, just a human being, and he has the unfortunate disadvantage of being in the spotlight to so many people. However, that doesn't give him an excuse. Like, what the hell was he thinking? Why would you do that? Why would you, as a doctor who has spoken out against the dumb decisions during COVID so many times, why would you ever? It's questionable just visiting his dad, but that could have at least been a healthier option than going on a boat of 16 people for a party. <sighs> That's my nonverbal analysis of it, along with some opinions scattered in there as well. Once again, I want to be able to give a quick and big shout out to Exter for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for your products. Thank you so much for your support. And for any of you watching and would like to receive some discounts, use my link below. 
for maybe some of your holiday shopping or birthday shopping or anything that's coming up or just get a wallet for yourself. They're very cool. They are very sleek and they have changed the way that I've looked at wallets and used them. So I do suggest you go out and at least check the website out themselves. If you liked this video, please consider hitting the like button, hit subscribe if you would like to be able to see more, and turn on the bell notifications to be able to be up to date. YouTube's not always reliable on that. If you would like to be able to support me in other ways, you can be a patron. There's the link below. I'm an Audible affiliate. Once again, link below, and I sell some merch. You'll never guess, but the link is below. But, but, without further ado, that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan, and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.